Cẩm Thu xin chào mừng quý vị và các bạn quay trở lại với phần 2 của chương trình Tôi và Việt Nam trên kênh truyền hình FBNC. Vị khách mời của chúng ta ngày hôm nay là Stephen Greg Lohoff, đại diện của tổ chức phi chính phủ Water A. Rouse Missionary Association, Gospel Fellowship Association hay còn gọi tắt là WAMA GFA. Chúng tôi xin phép được tiếp tục cuộc trò chuyện với vị khách mời này nhé. It seems that the majority of your work, um, including um, academic and also vocational activities, relate to teaching. How did this interest come about? Uh, very, very slowly, with very humble efforts at teaching, but eventually finding out this is the area where my gifts lie, mm -hmm. and that I should pursue this. I see. So regarding your English teaching uh, duties, could you please expand more on the added value services that you provide to those who want to learn English? Which qualifications do you hold, and also which methods have you found to be particularly uh, effective? Uh, I have finished a uh, bachelor's degree, finished graduate work, as well as a uh, teaching English as a foreign language certificate. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's been my privilege to be part of the faculty at the Trung Tâm Ngoại Ngữ của Trường Đại học Khoa học Xã hội Văn Anh Văn since 2007. And uh, I think I'm fairly familiar with the special challenges that Vietnamese people have mm -hmm in speaking English. You, you've overcome all those already, too. Thank you. <laughs> but, for example, um, I, I use uh, tongue twisters. Okay? One of them is, 66 chicks are stuck in a stock room full of 66 sticks. <laughs> you have to say... It's difficult. <laughs> you have to say, six times to pronounce that correctly, 66 sticks are stuck in a stock room full of 66 sticks. Wow. <laughs> so uh, as our students, always I have time in my class for students to do those kind of practices that makes them aware of those pronunci pronunciation challenges and, and overcome them. I see. Of course, all of us know the greatest challenge is uh, the sound that we don't have in Vietnamese that we do in English. And of course, you pronounce this so clearly already. Uh, the sound thin, think. So I have to tell my students, all right? Cắn lưỡi, mở mình một chút, thổi trên lưỡi dưới răng. And just like you're singing happy birthday, okay? Mm -hmm. Happy birthday to you. You have to do this when you say that sound. Happy birthday to you. If you can do that, you're saying it clearly. And every American will say, yes, I know exactly what you're trying to say. I see. Now, the other sound, of course, is the voiced TH sound. And all you have to do is turn on your voice make that same sound and you can say they, them, this, that, those and all those words clearly. Right. So we, we practice on those things. I see. Uh, and I, I'm so thankful some students have said, I learned how to pronounce that correctly in your class. That's wonderful. And I'll, I'll also mention that one of the uh, very rewarding parts of teaching at the Language Center at the University of Social Sciences and Humanities has been uh, group discussions. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a, a book that we work through. I've been asked to use to teach. I, I do these various pronunciation exercises. And then we have group discussions mm -hmm. on questions like, uh, for whom are you thankful? and why. And of course, just like they were trying to help me do at the Hoa Viet Nam Hau, mm -hmm. at the university, to introduce a topic where you forget yourself and you use all the Vietnamese you can to tell your story. Mm -hmm. you know? So I introduced this topic so that students will use all the English they can mm -hmm. to tell their story. And if they need help with a word or saying something correctly, I'll interject and help them. But I remember wonderful stories. For example, one of my students came and said, she, she was in tears, here's why, for whom I'm thankful. 
You see this? See this? She had a scar here. Mm -hmm. She said, when I was a girl, I was bitten by a cobra snake. Oh. And my uncle picked me up and ran and carried me to the health center and he saved my life. And she told that story in English. Mm -hmm. And I've never forgotten that. That's a treasure to me. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, one young lady with tears also expressed gratitude for her father who had been a professor in the past but could not find work in that field and was willing to work sweeping streets and do maintenance sanitation work to help feed their family. And, and uh, she couldn't hold back the tears mm -hmm. expressing gratitude to her father. So students have improved their English skill. Uh, we've uh, become friends with each other and uh, I've gotten the treasures of many wonderful stories in my heart through these years at the uh, Language Center. Those are beautiful stories, yeah. Um, you have been working for the USSH Language Center for nine years. The environment at the university must be very pleasant to retain you for such, for such a long time. What is keeping you there? Well, it's the, the opportunities like I've just described. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm thankful to to help improve English, and uh, I tell I tell students when uh, they've stated they've pronounced one of those pronunciation exercises, tongue twisters, correctly. I said, if I called my brother Mike right now and you talked to him on the phone, and you said, just as you did just now, 66 sticks are stuck in a stockroom full of 66 chicks. So now talking about the NGO projects that you have been working since 2005, I can see that you have mainly focused on healthcare and also uh, education. Uh, can you please share more about your projects and their results? Okay. Uh, when uh, Walter A. Ralph was retiring, he was in the midst of a, a series of projects in Lam Dong Province in uh, Huen Danyung to be specific. Uh, he was asked by the Committee for Population, Family, and Children then to sponsor the construction of preschool centers. And the goal of the project was to help uh, young to do so, the minority people who do not speak Vietnamese at home as their mother tongue, to have one or two years head start in Vietnamese at the preschool center before they begin grade one. Mm -hmm. The goal was to reduce the number of dropouts from school among the minority people, which I understand often occurred by grade three or four because they felt they could not keep up uh, studying with their uh, classmates, their Vietnamese classmates. So, um, uh, Several preschool centers were, were constructed, and we, we continued that project, uh, th that series of projects, 2005, 6, 7, and 8, and we're told that the dropout rate among the minority people was reduced by 50%. Wow. So uh, that's really a joy. And, Congratulations. Uh, um, of course, that's not really our idea. That was, uh, that was from the government. Uh, recognize, recognizing that need, and we were just privileged to be part of it. I see. So what challenges did you face in setting up your NGO operations? Well, taking over an established non-government organization, I really didn't have to go through many of those uh, challenges. It was the, uh, the evident love of the Wal uh, Walter Ray and uh, Pauline Routh Mm -hmm. and their command of the Vietnamese language that won for them uh, the privilege of establishing our NGO in the late 1980s. I see. Uh, I should probably mention perhaps the most well-known, maybe the most successful project that the Rouths had done during their, those years was establishing the Microfinance Corporation known as the SEP Fund. 
the full name is a Capital Aid Fund for Employment of the Poor Self-Employment. Mm -hmm. And loans of about $90, $95 were given to people. They, they may have capital to uh, develop a home industry or a service in the neighborhood, making brooms, mm -hmm. uh, soccer balls, having a nail a polish service. And uh, through this, many have lifted themselves uh, out of the lowest levels of poverty and uh, have contributed to the ongoing advancement of uh, Vietnam. I see. Uh, economic advancement. Uh, what's very, very impressive is that the payback rate for these loans in the mid-90s or so percent shows a very high conscientiousness mm -hmm. on the part of Vietnamese people and a very strong work ethic, I see. Which, uh, which is very commendable. I see. So what are other sources of funding beside the one you just mentioned? At that time, there were a number of longtime friends of the Rouths mm -hmm that businessmen in various fields that uh, enabled the Rouse to uh, have these projects after their retirement. Our friends, longtime friends in different places, and really no rich Americans, mm -hmm. just common folk, middle class folk uh, who have a heart for Vietnam. I see, all right. Thank you, let's take a short break again and we shall get back in a few minutes. Thưa quý vị, vừa rồi là phần 2 của chương trình Tôi và Việt Nam trên kênh truyền hình FBNC phỏng vấn vị khách mời Stephen Greg Lohoff, đại diện của tổ chức phi chính phủ Water A. Ralph Missionary Association, Gospel Fellowship Association hay còn gọi tắt là WAMA GFA. Chúng tôi xin phép được quay trở lại trong vòng ít phút nữa.